Hello everyone, I'm Greg. Welcome back to Watchpoint. Now we're going to look at uh, printf debugging. It should always be your last resort, I think, but sometimes we need that last resort. And I thought, can we get a printf in as low as one nanosecond? Spoiler alert, we can. Um, but there's, although there is a caveat, we'll come to it. Um, yeah, so uh, printf debugging, right? It should be your last resort, but sometimes you need it. Probably the, well, one of the really awful things about it is the dreaded Heisen bug. Okay, I've got some states made for race condition. I'm adding print statements. I'm kind of homing in on the root cause and I add one more print statement and it the problem goes away. Okay, and of course, because the race condition is dependent on timing and everything, and I'm adding print checks and I'm changing timing, and so things change. Not surprising, nothing you can really do about it, but it doesn't need to be nearly as bad as it is. It, is, it tends to be often in practice. So yeah, went down this journey looking at the implementation and the performance of various kind of printf things. So let's start at the beginning, the simplest printf, um, and here it is, is a really simple printf benchmark that I wrote, and let's just see how that, uh, that performs. So We'll do a little bit of optimization. I'm going to do dash G, dash G3. That won't change the performance at all. It doesn't change the generated code. Um, and that's my little uh, my, my little benchmark. So let's run that. Let's see how long it takes to do one, two, three, one, two, three, a million uh, printers. And okay, there we go. Nearly four seconds, right? Um, so four seconds to a million printers. So that's like what two and a half microseconds or something per printf. Kind of slow, but no one does that, right? Unless you're like you know. You know, just learning to program, you don't tend to be writing your print test to stand it out. So not really a fair test. Let's try, uh, let's try this. Let's let's do um, some file star uh, stuff here. So and oh, let's just do some really lame, but some kind of error handling. Okay. So let's um, let's try that. What have I got wrong there? Uh, uh, open to block uh, fprint test. Right, and uh, I didn't write it. Okay, so let's time that way quicker. So it was nearly four seconds now, it's uh, just a point zero, so nearly a hundred times quicker. So we're down to like, what, 250 nanoseconds or something? So much, much better, more realistic. Of course, it's writing it into a buffer, it will then flush that buffer at the end, okay? That's why it's so much faster, way fewer system calls, it doesn't have to update on the screen or anything. Um, does have a disadvantage, though, of course, if my program crashes, which it might well be doing if I've got some race condition I'm debugging like with a segv or something then maybe I haven't flushed the buffer maybe I missed the end um, of that buffer so you need to be careful with that maybe you can make a segv handler although even then be careful because you can't legally call f flush from a signal handler because it's not async signal safe although you'll probably get away with it 99 times out of 100 anyway we can work around these things it goes much faster much less intrusive um, better but still not great um, and uh, I also looked, by the way, at um, uh, using this, the uh, streams, C++ streams, to see if that would be any better. And uh, no, it performs very similarly, just slightly worse. I can come to the conclusion, I suspect, that streams is built on top of fprintf. So you'll see exactly the same performance, only a little bit a little bit worse. So 250 nanoseconds for a single printf. Maybe actually, if I, this is just running on my laptop, if I use a server class machine, I can get this to be a little bit better. Actually, 133 nanoseconds. But um, this, look how it scales, right? So as I add threads, it gets worse and worse and worse. And what's going on here is, I look at the implementation inside libc, it's taking a mutex when it does the write, and so other threads are blocking. So I've got 16 threads just hammering away here, or well, you know, one to 16 threads hammering away, and you can see it just gets really bad. And, and that mutex is much, is the real problem, okay? The time it takes is bad, but the mutex is disaster, because it's gonna cause the thing that does the printf to block while the other thing has the mutex, while the other thread has the mutex, and that's gonna just change the scheduling order. And it's like, no wonder my race condition's gonna go away or change as I add these, add these race conditions. Um, so yeah, not, not, a very, not a very satisfactory uh, solution. So went out uh, on the internet, see what I could find, um, do a bit better, found this thing uh, called Speedlog, right? So Speedlog, get it here on uh, GitHub. It's kind of quite, it's quite good actually. It's, it's a header only, header only C++ library, it produces really nice logs, lots of flexibility, all the kind of things you want. Uh, you can just get it by, you know, if your favorite package manager, so that's all cool. Um, but I'm not sure about this claim very fast. See benchmarks below, you know, single threaded, it's a few million operations a second. So we're talking what, you know, a few hundred nanoseconds. Uh, Multi-threaded, we're down to just over a million operations per second here. So back down to like microsecond land. So yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. And I, I looked at the performance of this and I kind of, yeah, came to the conclusion it's actually even worse than fprintf, right? It starts off a little bit worse and it just gets progressively worse. And it has, you can see these lines of the shape, same shape, right? It's exactly the same problem. It has a mutex. And so multiple threads contend on that mutex. 
you know, it's working here in the same mode where it prints to an internal buffer. Also has this problem that the buffer might not be uh, flushed if my program crashes halfway through. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a nice, it's a good thing, I, you know, good piece of work, but it wasn't what I needed here, um, not what I was uh, looking for. So I thought, what well, can we do a bit better? What happens if uh, we just uh, use sprintf here um, and, and just do that into a buffer? And that doesn't, turns out, doesn't need to take a mutex. So this is much more promising. I do need to still deal with multiple threads though. How do I do that without taking a mutex? Well, I'm using sync, fetch, and add here, right? So that's an atomic uh, operation to add uh, a number to a value in memory and return to me the, that, the value before I add it to it atomically, okay? So it doesn't need to block. Now, the CPU will potentially stall here if multiple threads are trying to do this at the same time, multiple CPU calls trying to do this at the same time, uh, but it's 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 not nearly as bad, right? So the thread isn't gonna actually block at the OS level. There'll just be a stall of a, of, of hopefully, um, you know, matter of uh, nanoseconds, maybe uh, 50 or 100 nanoseconds. Yeah, so look at this much better, right? So almost a horizontal line there. Starts off actually slightly slower, um, but, but but scales much, much better because we're not taking that mutex much less, uh, much less intrusive. Um, so this is good. I'm liking, I'm liking where we are. Now let's look at the implementation of this a little bit. The other thing I thought we might be, uh, well, let's, sorry, let's look at um, how this works. So yeah, so here's the index, okay? And then we get this when thread one gets the value, adds, adds to the index and gets the previous value atomically like this, okay? And then thread two can come along and does the same thing atomically adds to it again. And then thread one and thread two can write into that buffer concurrently, you know, until their heart's content. Um, and then this problem of like, well, but how do I flush the log? I thought, well, why don't we just mmap it, right? Good old mmap onto the disk. And this means that I don't need to have any separate flush operation. Even if I get sig kill, which I can't catch, the kernel will still ensure everything that's been written to that log buffer makes it out to the disk. So I'll get a proper uh, record of what's happened. Um, so yeah, that's the sprintf, works kind of nicely. Um, and uh, like I say, nice horizontal line there, except hmm, if I zoom in, this only looks horizontal because because fprintf and speedlog are so bad. If I zoom in, it, it's still, you know, but it's not nearly as bad, right? And what you're seeing here, that's the, these are the CPU stalls that I talked about with that atomic um, ad. And, um, and the performance, they still, you know, I was going for one nanosecond and here we're nearly 200 nanoseconds, even at single threaded. So I got to thinking, well, can we uh, can we do uh, better? And so, yeah, I think we can. So we can take what what's kind of getting in the way here is all this string uh, manipulation. So um, that's where, with my friend Aditya, we came up with this thing L3 for the lightweight logging library. You can go to GitHub here and, and, and get this to, to play with yourself. Similar kind of idea to, to my sprintf, it's, it's just doing an mmap backed store um, and the atomic increments before, but um, look how much better it performs. Down to one nanosecond for the single threaded case. Now I did tell you there's a caveat at the beginning. So the caveat is, yeah, multiple threading, it's getting up to, you know, thinking of 100 nanoseconds there because of the, you get these CPU uh, stalls, but no threads blocking there and it's still way, way better. Okay, so really good on the single, one nanosecond on the single case, less than 100 nanosecond multi-threaded and it scales nicely. It's still not perfectly horizontal, of course. There's only so much you can do about that. Um, but but much, much better. So let's uh, look at how we did. By the way, uh, before I get into that, if you're liking this, please do like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me and helps me know like what people are liking and what to do more of, and it'll help you too, because you'll get more of the great content as it comes available. Anyway, yeah, so one nanosecond up, to, you know, scaling nicely. How do we do that? Well, the main thing is to get rid of the string manipulation. So rather than, like just like before, but rather than writing in like the log into the buffer, we're just gonna write this little header structure. And the header contains a thread ID because that's very useful when you're debugging these race conditions, a pointer to the message and just two arguments. You can only have up to two 64-bit arguments. If you want more, tough. That's what we needed to do, get the performance as good as we can. Um, uh, but the, you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, Greg, you can't just like write the string pointer onto the file because that'll make no sense when I'm reading it. I'll just have these, uh, uh, these, these you know, nonsense pointers. So yeah, this is really neat. So what we can do is uh, actually just store the pointer on the mmap like before, but we also store this, this header structure, uh, which uh, contains the index. By the way, this is, we also did this with the sprintf because it's needed, because it, the thing wraps, okay? If we look at the code here, just bear with me. Uh, so we've got this, this is the key to it here, and we've got this percent buff size, okay? So it just adds a value and just wraps around. 
um, and we need to know if we've wrapped and where the begin where in the in the where in this log where is the actual beginning. Um, so we store the index both in the sprintf and in this version out on the mmap region, but we also store some information about the program uh, layout. And this allows us after the event to go from the pointer to um, uh, back to uh, uh, to the to the string literal, right? Um, so this works because my program on disk, okay, this is a, a program, an ELF file. ELF files contain a bunch of sections. The .text section, which is the code. .data section is the data. And among others, it has a .ro data section, read-only data, and that contains all your read-only data, including string literals, okay? When the program runs, the operating system will map these different sections into memory. They get called segments when they're in memory. Um, and including the RO data, that will be mapped with read-only, you know, but won't be writable. And in that will be the string literal. And so if I can then take the offset of that, take that pointer, work out the offset to the beginning of the segment, and then I can apply that same offset to the RO data section out on the file and find my string literal. So let's see how that works uh, in practice. Uh, so here we are. So if I, um, I've got this, uh, uh, I extended my um, I extended my benchmark program, as I said, to do lots of different kinds. So we're doing speed log, and that's how I could generate these charts, right? Speed log, C++ stream, fprintf, and L3. Um, so let's uh, do this. Um, and this is uh, cool. Now I, I, I link it with L3, as I said, um, and this is the, the super fast library. We also, because it's doing, uh, needs the format library because it's doing, uh, the speed log needs that. So uh, this just takes a couple of seconds to compile because the speed log thing is quite slow to compile. It's header only and it does lots of clever um, uh, template stuff and everything and compiles pretty slow, but it, 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 you know, there we are, we're done. And now I can run this and I can give it my different, so if I go sprintf and I do it with like four threads and uh, there we go. So, and that writes out this 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 log, um, which, okay, there it is. Um, and uh, I can run this with uh, L3 and uh, let's look at the L3 log. And yeah, it's binary, right? That's what we expected. But I've got this extra, this other utility that comes apart as L3, which is L3 dump, which if I give it that log file and I give it the program file, it can work out. There it is, like there's my, uh, there's the output. So it can it can uh, it can post process it. So that's how I store the minimum stuff at, at runtime. Um, as I said, um, you know that's and that's how we get the the one nanosecond uh, and scales much better. Um, yeah, okay, only one nanosecond with one thread gets a lot worse with multiple threads. I think there's a way to solve this, and I'd like to look at this later. If this gets a lot of, you know, I'm gonna see how much traction this stuff gets, how useful it is. Uh, but if it turns out to be useful, then what I'd like to do is have multiple of these mmaps, one per CPU core, and then um, you can write without that atomic uh, increment. Um, the problem, and then we can use the, um, and we can also write the uh, t timestamp counter from the CPU so we can like lace things back together. The problem with that approach is that it should go very, very fast, um, really fast, but it, will, uh, uh, it won't it will necessarily give me exact ordering in the log when I stitch it together because the different CPUs, definitely, certainly if it's different CPU packages, I'd expect the timestamp counter not to be perfectly in sync. And so I, we might say this, hap this log message happened before that log message ha happened, but actually they um, happened in a different order. Um, you might say, what does that matter? Like, what even is ordering on a multi-package NUMA system? That gets kind of interesting. So I think it could be useful. Um, but this still is a lot, lot better than anything else that I found out there. So I hope you hope you found that useful and interesting. Uh, do give L3 a try. Um, and please, if you liked it, do like uh, and subscribe. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye.